Hey everyone, it's Joy from Build Awesome Websites and today I thought I would take a break from doing the tutorial kind of stuff and take a look at JavaScript utility libraries that might come in handy for you at some point in time in your development career. And a lot of these have been around either for a while or are just really good at doing one specific thing. And I think it's really important to know which utility libraries are out there that can do one specific thing in case you need them at any point in time. So, so the first one here is Moment.js. So if you ever have to do any kind of working with dates in JavaScript, you know it can be a really big pain, especially if you want to format a date, um, you want to add or subtract time to a date, uh, you want to do anything with date manipulation or displaying or whatever. Uh, Moment is definitely you know, an awesome utility library for that. The next one is Lodash, and Lodash is really for, it's a utility library that helps you work with data structures a lot easier. Now I will say that um, ECMAScript Script 6 and beyond are starting to address some issues and some lackings in terms of what you can do with data manipulation in JavaScript. They added let and cons, they added arrow functions, the scoping is better. There's some better uh, methods and things you can use on different data structures like arrays and objects. So that part is starting to improve, but Lodash is still really nice uh, for having a utility library to be able to do different things. Let's take a look at the documentation. And you look at the different methods that come just, for example, for working with arrays that's on top of what you already get with vanilla JavaScript. So like chunk, it creates an array of elements split into groups the length of size. So for example, I can chunk this array into two groups and it gives me A, B, and C, D. So basically like you give it the group size and it will uh, create groupings based on the number you pass and then it'll probably just have a normal one left over. So uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with arrays here uh, with Lodash. Uh, collections, uh, some different uh, functions, um, some language support, uh, different maths, uh, different math methods, which is really nice, like sum. Uh, Bling.js is kind of a funny one, but it's also pretty cool. So you know how jQuery is really nice when it comes to syntax? but not necessarily all that nice because it's a very big file and a lot of people complain that maybe it slows down applications and it's just not necessary to have all that code in jQuery, especially as modern JavaScript has evolved and you know a lot of the nuances between browsers are kind of going away, so JavaScript is really starting to iron itself out, so we don't need all these cross-browser uh, things as much anymore. But you know what's really nice is jQuery syntax has always been really nice because you know what I don't really like is the syntax of document dot grab element by ID and put the ID in there. I really like that dollar sign thing. Well, you know what? You can use jQuery like syntax with this tiny little library called Bling.js. And the actual Bling.js is just this. This is all the code that is Bling.js. So yeah, basically what you end up with is um, the ability to, for example, an onClick function, I can use this syntax right here, input onClick, just like I would with jQuery, except I'm not using jQuery. I'm just using this tiny little uh, utility library called Bling.js, and I get to use jQuery-like syntax. Uh, Papa Parse. Papa Parse is really nice for if you're working with CSVs. So if you ever find yourself at a company and they're like, hey, we need to like upload and parse CSV files or like they're like hey can we can we like upload something from Excel to like our platform and you're like um I don't know uh, let me see check out Papa Parse. Papa Parse allows you to basically take CSV files and then you can like up, uh, create uploads and downloads and then basically uh, you know, manipulate CSV into like JSON data or like JSON to CSV so they can download and then use that in Excel. A lot of different things you can do with uh, Papa Parse. Uh, Chroma JS. This is a utility library for working with colors. So it's all these different functions that allow you to pass a color in and then just like what I showed earlier with Moment JS, 
This is kind of like the moment JS of colors where you can just chain these different methods and do different things with uh, color manipulation. So it's got a pretty good documentation, really easy to read syntax, uh, any kind of color format that you want to work with. You can transfer like to and from different formats, I think. Um, yeah, color.git and set. A lot of different stuff you can do with Chroma JS for color manipulation, so definitely check this out. Uh, next, one of my favorites, Prism JS. If you have a blog and you want to share your code with people, um, but you're not putting it up on GitHub per se, so let, let's say you're writing a blog post and you want to have like uh, syntax highlighting on your examples on your blog posts, well, check out Prism JS. Super lightweight, and it's a syntax highlighter for the browser. So basically, when you uh, want to display code on a web page, because you're using HTML tags, you need to pre-format them. And what that does is it prevents the browser from parsing the HTML and rendering it as HTML, and it just takes every character as is. That's what the pre-formatted uh, tags do. But to take it a step further and actually have syntax highlighting, just like in your uh, code editors, you need some sort of JavaScript that has like regular expression parsing and highlighting and stuff. So that's what uh, Prism JS does. It's really good. Uh, I've never had problems with it. They have a lot of different themes you can, so if you like a certain theme, uh, this demo page is really nice because you can just click on a theme and see what it looks like. Oh, let's try out the funky theme. Oh, that looks like that. Let's try out the Ocadia theme. That looks like that. You can also make your own theme simply by uh, changing the CSS that comes along with it. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, it's really cool and one of my favorite uh, little JavaScript utilities. Uh, next up is Mousetrap. Uh, this is an easier way to make uh, key bindings for your project. So let's say you want to make like a little JavaScript game. Uh, you might want to check out Mousetrap for uh, creating key bindings to be able to support uh, key bindings in JavaScript in a very easy to read uh, syntax. So you have this object called mouse, mouse trap, and then you bind uh, in a string format the the key that you want to bind to, and then you pass in a function and say, okay, well, what do I want to return from it? What do I want to do in this function? Blah blah blah. So four and a half k uh, minified pretty easy to use. Browser support is uh, off the charts, so pretty much supports every browser. So definitely check out Mousetrap if you're looking for some kind of key binding, shortcut, easy to read syntax like JavaScript utility. Uh, next up is everyone at some point has to deal with image carousels. Uh, I'm done. I'm past the days of image carousels. I don't even like them. I think they're annoying. But sometimes they are kind of okay if you're, you know, scrolling through some images. Uh, but this one is still pretty good. It's responsive. It's supported in like pretty much all browsers. It works really well. There's a lot of different settings you can use. The one thing I will say is, you know, I feel like carousels are a little bit out of date, but this is kind of one of the best around and it's really easy to use. The syntax is really clear. Um, not really sure how large the file is though, so it's that's something to consider. But Slick uh, JS is a pretty pretty good uh, image carousel, and as it says, it's the last one you'll ever new, need. And I pretty much agree with that because it has all the different um, features that you want. A lot of times, people are like infinite scrolling is a big one, mainly because people are like, "Hey, I don't want to get to the end and then scroll all the way to the start again. I just want to go back to the start if I go beyond the end." That's always kind of a big one in projects, so different things, pretty nice. And the final JavaScript utility today is clipboard.js. If you ever need to copy to a clipboard, let's say just like before when I was saying uh, prism.js is good for syntax highlighting, if you want somebody to be able to copy that code to the clipboard so that they can use it, uh, check out clipboard.js, three kilobytes, no flash, no frameworks, just pure JavaScript. Uh, and you have an immediate way to quickly copy and paste to someone's clipboard 
So thanks for watching, and if you have any uh, utility libraries that you like quite a bit, uh, maybe let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested in learning about new little utility libraries for different things in JavaScript. Uh, otherwise, be sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more content like this. Anything to do with front-end development um, uh, that you want to learn about or are interested in, uh, you could leave that in the comments below as well, and I'll try to cover more topics uh, as they come up in the future. And thanks for watching.